on Fox Sports. What a game we have for you to kick off Super Saturday. It's Manly up against Melbourne. One versus two. Dueling it out at a showdown for top spot of the NRL ladder after 11 rounds. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Warren Smith along with Laurie Daly to bring you all the action here tonight in front of what is a very big crowd, as you'd expect, for this clash at Brookvale Oval tonight. Let's take a look inside the Melbourne Storm dressing room. Their back line has a couple of changes. The fullback is Slater. Turner, King and Gaia are there. Gaia going into the centres. Israel Folau comes off the bench and goes onto the wing. And Greg Inglis returns from playing on the wing for Queensland to be 5'8". He's partnered, of course, in the halves by Cooper Cronk. The forward pack for Melbourne is Cross, Smith, White. Quinn moves out of the centres and into the back row. Hoffman is there with Johnson, of course. And the bench now for Melbourne is Lima, Donnelly, Orbison and Tagatizi. Late change for Melbourne, of course, with Jeremy Smith injuring his thigh in the final practice run last night at Mascot Oval before they take on the Seagulls here today. That is a blow because Jeremy Smith, a damaging player, and they'll be hard-pressed to beat this side who lead the Premiership, Laurie, by two points for and against. They've been in sensational form, Manly, and this is the way they will line up tonight. Brett Stewart at the back of the field. Robinson is on the wing. A centre combination of Bell and Matai. Chris Hicks is the other winger. Jamie line is starting in the 5'8 position along with the number seven and skipper Matt Orford. The forwards that look like this. Jason King, Brent Kite up front. Michael Monaghan is the hooker and a hard-working back row. Anthony Watmo, Glenn Stewart and Luke Williamson. One of the reasons they are sitting on top of the competition table. The interchange bench. Burns, Hall, Rose and Bright and of course Desi Hasler is their coach. They embrace and Desi Hasler pointing the finger. The last instructions. And here come the Melbourne Storm out of their dressing shed. I think we're in for a beauty tonight. They've suffered, of course, like Manly, just the one loss that came against the West Tigers back in round eight up at Gosford. They went down 30 points to 12 on that occasion. That was after backing up from City Country. We'll see how they fare after backing up from Origin with five players, including Brett White, having to do exactly that. Well, Cameron Smith... Just been a wonderful player. Really controls the tempo of the game so well. In Origin 1-1, one, one, only had four runs, four kicks, 38 tackles. Plays 80 minutes. He's just a very mature player, Cameron Smith. And I'm sure it's some... Well, he is one of the players that Manly would have spoken a lot about tonight. And Greg Inglis, two-try hero for Queensland on Wednesday night. Really freakish with some of the things that he can produce on a football field. Playing... In the 5 role, I still don't think he's handled it that great. He hasn't adapted, but I've got no doubt, given time, he will be able to fill that role. Billy Slater been in magnificent form. Some great individual matchups all over the paddock tonight. Can't wait to see Slater versus Stewart here tonight. The crowd have been chanting manly. They'll get to see their team hit the field for the first time tonight. They are on their feet on the hill here at Brookvale Oval. Orford leads them out. A big game for him, of course, after spending so many seasons with the Melbourne Storm. We'll see how he fares against the old club tonight. And Brett Stewart, speaking of the flyer, on screen, 35 games at Brookvale, 35 tries. Well, he's trying desperately hard on Monday night to score a try. He failed to do that. Can we expect something special from the man they call the snake? Very fast. Brett Kite lining up against his fellow front row partner from Wednesday night for New South Wales up against Brett White. He made 67 metres, 19 tackles. But in tremendous form, Kite. He'll be looking for an aggressive start to really set the platform for his teammates. And Shane Hayne, of course, is our referee. 124 first grade games. Let's get it on. We're about to do exactly that. In front of a big crowd at Brookvale Oval, we're underway. It's going to be the Storm who get first use of the ball. Cooper Cronk with a catch and he gives it off to Brett White who brings it back out past the Melbourne Storm 10. He drums at the nose this time after he comped one from Tony Carroll in the opening minutes, of course, of Origin 1 on Wednesday night at Suncorp Stadium. Cross out there in jumper eight following suit. Hoffman takes them up to the 30-metre line. Smith out of dummy half going to Johnson. Spends a lot of time for the Storm at first receiver. Stopped there by King and also Williamson. Now a 
knock on, getting back to his three from Johnson. On play number four has put Melbourne under some pressure here. Manley's first possession will come from close range, perhaps just a nudge there from Jason King. Well, he was trying the ball loose. Well, he's trying to sell it to the referee like that, but Dallas Johnson would be very disappointed in his effort getting up to play the football. And playing away from home, you can ill afford, afford to get away to a bad start. Orford from the back of the scrum gives it off to Steve Matai back from a weak suspension for the high tackle on Ben Smith of Parramatta here two weeks ago. Monaghan out of dummy half giving it to Watmo. He was terrific. He was our man of the match on Monday night football here against the Brisbane Broncos earlier this week. Now Williamson going down the short side, grabbed by Inglis. He pops it up. He thought there might have been a strip from the Melbourne 5 8. The referee doesn't think so, and an early mistake from Manley in good position. Yeah, he'd be very disappointed with that, Luke Williamson. Off the back of an error from Melbourne, you really need to make the opposition pay. Just taking the ball to the line, trying to get to the outside of Greg Inglis. Inglis tackles over the football. He forces it loose. He's claiming that it was a one-on-one -on -one strip. It should have been play on. Oh, now here's a mistake from Matt King. One off the scrum. And it gives the ball straight back to Manly, 15 metres out from the Melbourne line. Well, it's a similar start to what they had a few weeks ago against the West Tigers, the Melbourne Storm. And on that occasion, they continually turned the ball over. And the West Tigers took full advantage of it and rattled up a score. Can Manly look to do the same? Here's Bell up against his former teammate in Matt King on this near side of the field in the first half what a matchup that is our opponents on wednesday night opponents here again tonight another penalty for manly slow to get off the play hang on, hang on, the ball with the mate. melbourne defenders jamie lyon will just increase the meters between manly at the tap 20 in from the touchline and the melbourne storm on their own defensive line monaghan will tap it and give it to king who runs at them Arm's length for scoring the opening try. Kite now gets his turn. They came up off their line very quickly. Cameron Smith was there, so was Ben Cross. White came in at the death to knock him to the ground as well. Monaghan coming back to this right-hand side of the field, running a long way, giving it to Stewart. A chance for Hicks, who will reach out and score the opening try for Manly. They were gifted possession, a couple of mistakes, one from Johnson, one from King, and at the second occasion they come back to the near side and Chris Hicks, I think you'll find, has planted the ball down okay and should have four points. Well, you said they gifted them the football and they've gifted them points. Brett Stewart coming into the back line, giving a terrific pass to Chris Hicks. Now, King tries to make a ball and all tackle but i get the feeling that hicks has planted the football down his arm does not go out and that will be a first four pointer of the night for the eagles what a start and the two errors from the melbourne storm players were from the players that were backing up from wednesday night a lack of concentration by dallas johnson and matt king simple errors have put their team under pressure and here comes the green lights. Chris Ward, our video referee, needs only a couple of looks at it to decide that Hicks got the ball down OK in the corner. There was no suggestion of an obstruction here as Steve Bell ran the decoy. He stopped on his run. Everybody had a fair shot as a result at Chris Hicks. He grabs his seventh try of the season and Manly get a 4 nothing start to this game. After just four minutes of play, good work by Hicks to beat the tackle there of King and also Geyer coming across. 73 tries now in his career, of course. He's been here for a number of seasons at Brookvale and he really has blossomed on this right wing in the last couple of seasons. Jamie Lyon, who wants to kick it for New South Wales in Origin 1 on Wednesday night, has a difficult course, one here up against the sideline to try and make it six points to nil. 31 of 41 so far this year for just over 75% success rate. That's the happy knack of striking them well from wide out, kicking ones you'd expect him to miss and then 
conversely missing ones from fairly simple range as we saw against Parramatta here back in round nine a strike it's a wobbly old one isn't it it barely got up above head level that won't do his confidence much good for the rest of the game if in fact he has to kick one to win the game perhaps later on he just didn't strike it well at all but Michael Monaghan has been a terrific player this season for Manly he's played a number of positions on that occasion getting out of the dummy half roll and scooting across field players pushing into space players in motion always difficult to defend against kickoff comes down to Matt Orford in front of this big crowd at Brookvale Oval as Williamson brings it back out towards the Manly 20 they lead four points to nil oh Jason King somehow hung on to it that was a super effort by the front row it looked like it was going to be a knock on comfortably he grabbed it centimeters from the turf Brent Kite getting to his feet, playing it up against this cocoon-like Melbourne Storm defence. They are the masters, of course, at the wrestle. They have led the league in that in the last couple of seasons. Now Watmo taking it forward. Three players there, including Johnson and Anthony Quinn, working him over. It could have been a penalty easily for Watmo. Shane Hayne allowing play to continue on. The kick. The bounce down towards Steve Turner. The try sneak on this left-hand side of the line. For Melbourne, he gets plenty of chances to score tries and, of course, has grabbed three of them in seven games so far this year as they work it away from their own end. Well, their first priority in this set of six is to get to their kick, Melbourne Storm. It's been a disappointing start by their standards. Two sets, two errors, a penalty, concerted points. They need to be playing football down the other end of the field. Here's White. Charging up to the halfway line, of course. A good game tonight. Won't hurt his prospects of being... Picked for New South Wales in Origin 2. If in fact he is under pressure, Hoffman goes through them. Lovely ball from Cronk. He couldn't find King or Turner to link up with. And they'll play it here just outside the 10. Here's Cronk coming back to the short time looking for Slater. He dumps it out the back for Johnson. And instead it's Chris Hicks who comes up with it for Manly. Well, it's one of their favourite plays, the Melbourne Storm, coming down this left side of the field. A double pump by Cooper Cronk. And Ryan Hoffman hitting the hole, tremendous run. Also good work by Brett Stewart, just to fade back, not be committed to Hoffman. Hold, hold! Here's Matai playing it. Steve King revving up again, trying to bring it outside the 20. Well, the crowd have been baying for a penalty for Melbourne being inside the 10. They finally got their wish. And Matt Orford will find the line somewhere back up towards the halfway line. It wasn't a deep kick, and in fact, if Melbourne been back there defending the touchline on that kick for line from Orford, they might have had a play at the ball. Here is Kite going across the halfway line. Melbourne have completed just one of three so far in the game. Williamson now, the player who made a mistake. That was responded with a mistake by King. We know Manly scored off the back of it. What made it an inside ball? Tries to bounce back to his feet quickly. Is able to do so now. Monaghan coming to Warford. Looking one way. Getting caught by the forwards. Pops the ball back. He wasn't tackled. King now getting in between them. Stopped there by Hoffman and also Ben Cross. Monaghan from Dummy Hart. Chipping over the top. In behind Falau who has to play at it. Only knocked it over the dead ball line. Just with the fingertips on the pressure there from Robertson. Perhaps the biggest game so far in his young career well for every error that Melbourne have made early in the game Manly are making them pay for it their kicking game has been great their chases are getting down there they're really applying the blow towards this Melbourne Storm defensive line Cameron Smith with the drop out will find Matty Orford who took it very nonchalantly at the halfway line in the full Kite bringing it back to be stopped there by Matty Guy defending in the middle of the line at the moment. Playing in the centres, defending like a front rower off his goal line dropout. Here's Stewart, grabbed by Guy, just outside the 20. He plays it for Monaghan. Goes to Hicks, then line. Cut out ball for Orford. One no hitting the hole, stop there. And a good tackle by Cronk with the help of Inglis. Brett Stewart. Giving it to Warford. He comes back to the open side. Monaghan spirals a good ball. 
for Glenn Stewart. He keeps it alive. Coming in off the wing, Steve Turner shuts him down. He times it nicely. Fast play the ball, though, for Monaghan to Stewart, who knocks it on. That's good play there by both those football teams. Manly really trying to play an expansive game. Some interchanges of passing, some nice directional changes. But the Melbourne Storm, they keep working hard for one another and they keep turning up with their defensive plays. It's one of the reasons why they are one and two in this competition. You expect no easy points in a game like tonight. We saw Desi Hasler doing it very tough in what seemed to be a comfortable win for Manly over the Broncos on Monday night. I don't know who he's going to be by the end of this game here if it stays tight. Here's Billy Slater getting to dummy half. No Cameron Smith playing for Melbourne last week, of course, on origin duty for Queensland. Billy Slater worked the ball from dummy half. Forty one times in that game against the Roosters. An amazing amount for a player who plays at fullback. He touched it 64 times in total. He won't do that tonight, of course, with Cameron Smith back out here as he gives it to Johnson. He'll play it just outside the Melbourne 30. Here is Smith, who in the kicking with that left boot of his from dummy half. It will bounce down towards Michael Robertson, who fields it at his own 30. Not a deep one from Cameron Smith. He stops pretty well, Robertson, by Cronk and also Johnson. He will get through a heap of work tonight on Cameron Smith and also Dallas Johnson. Absolutely loves it, Johnson. He played 49 minutes for Queensland in Origin 1 here at Suncorp Stadium. What no? Play it here for Brett Stewart. Williamson now. Angling back in behind the play of the ball to take it inside the 40 of Melbourne. 11 and a half gone, it's Manly on top, 4-0. Here's Orford, handing it off to Jamie Lyons, stepping in traffic, got past a couple before he was cleaned up there by Cameron Smith. Could have been a penalty for knocking him back to the ground. Orford kicking for Stewart. The bounce, though, goes straight to Greg Inglis. What an effort by Stewart, though, to round him up in the end goal area. Inglis is so strong, we know what he can do to defenders, but Stewart got a grip on him and was able to drag him backwards to make a stop. Well, they're very enthusiastic in their opening 12 minutes of the contest. Manly, they're getting down there. If there's a kick on, they all know about it. And someone's prepared to get down there and put a Melbourne Storm player under pressure. And on that occasion, it was Brett Stewart chasing through the kick, showing plenty of strength to be able to hold Greg Inglis in the end goal another drop out from Melbourne legs. played off the legs there of Warford back into his own territory he'll pick it up himself and have to carry it back to the forwards where he's stopped by Hoffman and also Ben Cross will play it there at the 40 Monaghan going to Kite running at Inglis Sort of liking to work it down the field on this left hand edge going towards Cronk and also Inglis and to begin the game are defending on the same side of the field. We don't see that all that often. Half back alongside 5-8 in the defensive line. Here's Lyon coming back to the right hand side now as he gives it off to Stewart. He stopped about 10 metres out from the Melbourne line. They've used four plays. A couple left in this set of six. Monaghan waiting. Gets out of dummy half before he gives it to Williamson. He hung on to it under pressure. Anthony Quinn made a good tackle. It had to be made as well. Here's Orford kicking again. Kicking one for the corner. Robertson can fly. We know that. It's still there for Manly. What no has come up with it. And I think he'll find his short a try. Never forced it. Then go through to the uh, Manly player. It seemed as though they all had a shot. Robertson was flying through, out there posted. They were waiting under the high ball here, the Melbourne Storm Edge defenders. Nobody could come up with it. It looks as though they're all on side on the chase, and we'll see what happened from there. For Lau, he is very tough to get over the top of. Perhaps the only way it could be a no try is if Robertson got a hand to it in the contest there with Falau. I think he has. I think Robertson actually touches the football and forces it forward. I Left hand Rob of Robertson. I think Robertson's hand has definitely touched the football. Falau tries to come down with it. He then loses it. And Watmau dies on the football. But I don't think we should be looking at the grounding. 
Look at the contact with the ball in the foot, uh, in the air. Robinson makes a play at it, and I've got no doubt from that picture there that Robinson knocks the ball forward. Zofalau got his right hand on the ball also at one stage. Not an easy one here for our video referee tonight, Chris Ward, to make a call on, but it did look as if there was a hand in there, the left hand at that of Michael Robertson. Chris Ward has a call. He says try. No touch by Robertson, according to the video referee. Watmo gets the four points, and Manly lead eight points to nil. Well, it's just sustained pressure from Manly. The kick over the top on fifth tackle. I still think that Robertson touches the football. He comes through. He interferes with Falau. The referee has gone to the video ref. Ward's awarded yeah, it. Rocks, but shots. Manly, they're just controlling the game so well. They're building pressure, and off the back of that pressure, they're able to get points. <sighs> Terrific start. Through the legs there of Billy Slater, who was behind his run for Lauda cleaner, he couldn't do so, and Anthony Watmo couldn't believe his luck. When the ball presented itself behind Slater, he put it down very comfortably as it turned out, and now Jamie Lyon, 10 metres in from the far touchline, has a chance to make it 10 points to nil. What a start for man. Well, all the, the game has been played it seems as though inside the, the Melbourne Storm 30 metres, though. Just can't get out of trouble, Melbourne. Unable to convert with his first attempt. No drivers, though, with this one. Flags in the air. And it is the Seagulls over the Storm. Ten points to nil. So we've had just under a quarter of an hour played. And you can see that crowd standing room only at the back of the hill here on the eastern side of Brookvale. That's always a... Good indication that it is close to capacity, of course. All the seating had been sold in the grandstands prior to today. We'll find out exactly how big that crowd is, but as you'd expect, with one versus two, the locals have responded. Here's Brent Kite bringing it back out from the restart. Melbourne looking for something to get themselves back into the game in the hurry. They've had just the one scoring chance, and that came off a long-range break. And here's Jason King being worked over there by Ben Cross. Something with a grapple looking tackle from Ben Cross. Now the markers aren't square. And they'll get the penalty, Manly. They should have got perhaps on the play before. And again, they'll come on the attack here, looking to blow this game wide open. Well, it's all about possession in this game of rugby league. When you've got the possession, the opposition get tight. And they're just controlling it so well. Nearly 80% the football merely have had after 16 minutes and when you're under that type of pressure you start to make poor decisions you start to be give away penalties you start to miss tackles Monaghan from dummy half going to Lyon players in motion on his outside he held up the ball in the end it was Glenn Stewart who ended up with it stopping a good tackle though by Matt King now Brett Stewart he keeps his try scoring record intact and stay at, at least 100% as far as games and tries of football is concerned. Here's Orphan now. Oh, to Matai, stop 10 metres out from the line. Monaghan going quickly from dummy half, put it down. He saw a chance to attack the inexperienced Israel Falau on that side, a very short side of the field. He turned it over on the last play, and as a result, Melbourne will work it away from their own 10 trying not to put it down once again. They've had just four sets of six with the ball. We've had 17 minutes. Manly have completed eight of 11 sets so far. It has been one-sided. It's like they need more of Melbourne. Outside backs getting into dummy half, taking a little bit of pressure off their forwards. And there's a poor play the ball by Billy Slater. They're making it extremely difficult on themselves. He knew what was required, but Melbourne, under pressure, haven't handled it. Just losing the ball as he got to his feet. No suggestion of the interference there from Williamson, although Billy Slater pointed towards the foot of Williamson and said, sir, he helped it away from my grasp. 
The referee wanted nothing to do with it. And three mistakes. The three very experienced men for Melbourne have hurt them to begin this game. Brett White gets a break after almost 18 minutes. He go back to the bench for the time being. Matai will play it here for Melbourne. Robertson getting out of dummy half. Jinking run. The live wire winger just outside the 20 when he's tackled. Orford showing it to King. Now he sets line a lot. He's looked sharp tonight, Jamie Lyon. Another good offload. Here goes Steve Bell. He stopped just outside the Melbourne 10. Looking for a 16 0 scoreline here. Monaghan going to Orford. Back on the inside for Williamson. He stopped. There was a high tackle. Coming across the top was Ben Cross. I'll tell you what, the penalty count against the Storm is starting to build. It's one of those penalties where you sort of, it is high. Penalty sufficient. They are going to take a kick at goal, but everything is just going Manly's way. They've got to hang in here, Melbourne. They need to be able to hang in and hopefully things start to turn for them. They've got to make sure that they get some possession and not turn it over cheaply. You mentioned it earlier, Warren. King, Johnson, Slater, three of the more experienced players from Melbourne making the mistakes. And they can't afford to be making those type of mistakes. You usually you know, can handle it if it's some of the younger players in your squad, but not the senior players. They need to be leading from the front. Line converts to 12 point ball game after 20 minutes. Midway through this first half, and Melbourne have scarcely had a tackle in manly territory so far. And the locals just can't believe what they've seen from their competition leaders. Of course, there were just two points for and against that is differential between these two clubs coming into tonight's game. That's all that separated them, but so far. It has been very much one-way traffic as Cameron Smith gets us back underway. The kick will go down to Brett Stewart, who gives it off to Luke Williamson. He's had plenty of touches to begin this game. Carries it forward for the eighth time so far tonight already. Here's Monaghan. Going to Brent Kite. Makes a tackle there. Johnson with the help of Ryan Hoffman. Now King going to Glenn Stewart. And towards Matty Geyer, who still is defending a long way in from his normal position of centre tonight, if you like. Bell now, taking it over the 40-metre line. Perhaps a chance here at a 40-20 kick from Orford. He might be just a little bit too far down the field to attempt one. Now Watmo ends away from Cooper Cronk's attempted tackle. Looking dangerous again tonight on that edge. Stewart giving it to Orford. Bumped to ground there by Dallas Johnson. That was OK, and the kick, would you believe, it bounced about a metre in from the touchline. Well, in your luck's with you. It stays with you. And Matty Orford, a little bit of a check as he was kicking the football. But just finds the touch, merely walk to the scrum. A little bit rattled Melbourne. They've just got to be able to stay composed. Not so much worry about the scoreboard. Don't let the scoreboard affect them. Worry about the next play. Make that the most important thing on their mind. What's their role and responsibility on this play? It's to push forward with the ball carrier. Here's a strong defence from the Manly back row. Williamson and Stewart getting there in a hurry. Finding Steve Turner backwards after the scrum win. Jeff Lima is out there now for Melbourne. Move. He's he took dead. the place of Brett White, and we'll see what Lima can do. Now Graham starting it forward. He'll have to put his hand up and help out the forwards when he can. Cameron Smith to Ryan Hoffman. Good run running it. Jamie Lyon back in between the A defenders, making them work from marker. Cross. He has been terrific for Melbourne recently. He forces a pass here, though. It came off the leg of Jason King and straight back to Jamie Lyon. And Manly have it again already in Melbourne territory. And Melbourne just killing themselves here at the moment. Brent Kite standing in the tackle for an age before he's finally dragged to ground. Run by Cross. The pass didn't need to be forced. And as a result here, they come again, the locals. Well, he worked it well. It was fifth tackle. They could have got to a good kick. Mark Bright is out there in 17 for Manly. He'll play it here for Monaghan. Play number five is Orford. Goes in behind the run of Watmo, giving it to Brett Stewart. 
There is Robertson standing for a while in the tackle of Croft before Inglis and Falau come in to finish him off. Last play here for Manly. Steve Mallow wasn't too impressed about something in the tackle there, and now Robertson is hurt. He has a knee or an ankle problem getting back to his feet here. Steve Mallow wasn't too happy about something in the tackle. He was pointing at one of the Melbourne Storm defenders. I think they realised straight away there was a problem with Robertson because they all pretty much stopped around the play of the ball. Well, I was wondering what was going on because the referee was saying, held, get back on side. There didn't look to be too much in that tackle. Gets him around the leg. What are we doing, Charlie? A few of the boys come in and make a tackle. Stay on. You can see him in pain. And that was before the contact, that grimace for Robertson before Inglis came in over the top. And I think it was just the lower leg there of Cronk. He had it held in position. And Robertson, as he pivoted, might have just tweaked the knee. The right knee. Hey, careful. We'll wait and see how he is over the next couple of sets. For the moment, Dale Warford puts the kick high in the air. Slater underneath his own goalpost had to make an awkward catch. It was a terrific catch as it turned out. Stewart was coming through quickly. I just hope we get to see those two head to head at some stage tonight. That's the hardest catch in the game to take. Well, it's a spiral bomb, it's floating. You've got the upright and the crossbar to contend with, and you can't afford to take your eye off the football, and you can hear the footsteps coming. Here is Lima, who'll play it. Just outside the Melbourne 30, Smith. Johnson, met by Brent Hyder, was up quickly, looking to put a hit on his origin opponent of Wednesday night. Cameron Smith going to Cooper Crow. Now Inglis comes to Matai. What a solid defender Steve Matai is. Inglis will play it here. Five on his own side of halfway. Falau going to Quinn. Matt Orford pulled out of the play by the referee. Good ball there by Quinn to give it to Ian Donnelly. A one time Siegel takes it to the 40 metre line. A rare foray to this end of the field for Melbourne. Cooper Cronk will go to the air. Some pressure on Stewart floating back. Will he get back to the in goal? He won't. He took it from the field of play. Good call by the referee. A pinpoint bomb by Cooper Cronk. And they've got Manly inside their own 20 for just the second time in the game. Yeah, it was a great take though by Brett Stewart. Cronk, another floating high ball put up in the air. Equal to the task, now merely have to work off their own line. This is where Melbourne need to be. They need to be able to, to force merely to kick from inside their 40. And here's Bryant. He's got a bit of solid tackle. There was Lima. Donnelly was also there with Quinn helping out. Mark Ben Stewart. Swing out from his own area. Play here. Short of the halfway line. Monaghan will go and pass it to the trainer. Stewart got there in time. Well, I know Jeff Tooby spends a fair bit of time on the field. That gets commented on quite a bit. But I've never seen that before. The trainer given the option of putting in a clearing kick. He must have called for it. He must have certainly caught the dummy half side. Well, Matty Orford was coming down to the right side. And Monaghan went away from him. But Brett Stewart, under pressure, was able to get a kick in. Falau didn't take it on the full. And what looked as though it was going to turn out disastrous for Manly actually turned into an OK play. Matt King. Looking back up towards the halfway line. 25 and a half gone. It's from all the Seagulls to run out to a 12 nil lead. Here's Cooper Cronk. Taking some stopping here in the tackle of Watt Mullen, also Stewart. Slater has a good ball to Cameron Smith, who drives it low. Going to get it into the in-goal area between Hicks and Stewart. He almost did that, and now Chris Hicks, one of the two try scorers tonight for Manly, will play it here just inside his own 20. Hawthorne goes to Steve Bell. When we played at the Graves out of Olympic Park, every time he touched the ball, one of the members of the crowd would ring the bell. They, the cowbell these days is a variation on a theme. Seems to work for the Melbourne Storm and the move to Manly and certainly works for Steve Bell. He's become an origin player as a result. Williamson stopped there. Good tackle by Johnson. Cutting him down around the legs as ever. What no? Takes it across the halfway line. Met by Anthony Quinn and also Lima. 
Last play here for Manly. We'll see if they go to the air once again to put some pressure on Slater. What no? Following the tackles there. They kick it through the hands. Matai gives it to Robertson. English coming towards him. The pole goes to ground. Picked up. Orford keeps the line. Bright is there. Taken to ground. He passed it after he was tackled. And that will be a penalty. But it looked good for Manly. Had the pass gone to Williamson, I think he scores. Well, it was lovely work by Matty Orford down the short side. Last play. Flower dropped back. They worked the numbers beautifully. There was support coming through the, the middle. And Matt, a lovely pass on to Robinson. Robinson back on the inside. He needed to be able to take that football. But it's a relieving penalty for Melbourne. They've hung on. They need some good ball sets inside Manly's half. Manly showed us on Monday against the Broncos where they looked as though they were going to go on with the game and have a big victory. They sort of fell away a little bit with their performance. Melbourne will be hoping, hoping that that trend will continue. They need to ask more questions up. Now comes to Ryan Hoffman. It's Melbourne asking a question of this Manly defence at the moment. Who's the best in the competition? Here's Cameron Smith with the double pump it. Now it comes to Kronk. He gets the ball away for Anthony Quinn. Slade is also there. He gets across the line, but I don't know that he got it down. That'll be a tackle five, mate. Just check the grounding, mate. Good the hands the side of the ball by the with, Melbourne uh, Storm from Kronk to Quinn and then to Slater who was fighting to get the ball on the grass, it might be difficult to ascertain whether he did or not. Well, this is the comeback that they needed, Melbourne. Great support play there by Melbourne. Little interchanges of passing. Slater, does he get the football down? There's still momentum in the tackle. There is still momentum in the tackle. Orford does his best, but how long do they let it go? And when do they deem the tackle is complete? Well, I think you need to watch it first off at normal speed to give you a truer impression because you watch it with a super slow-mo, it takes half an hour. But if you watch it at normal speed, it will give you a better impression perhaps as to Billy Slater getting the ball down. Well, I can't see contact with the turf and given what that angle shows us at that speed, I'm going to say no try held up. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that you deny someone a try if the video evidence is not there. I think there needs to be perhaps that, more evidence that there might have been scored. Yeah, Just because you can't prove I, it one way or the other I, doesn't mean it is a try. I think... I, I have seen one of these before with Hazemel Mazarin a grand final. I saw one on Wednesday night. Nathan Hindmarsh was awarded a try, well, which wasn't a video try. referee. Very true. It was no different to what we saw just there. 29th minute, a big call coming up here. They're all big calls tonight with... Team one playing team two. Chris Ward, another difficult one after he awarded one to Manley. He says ref's call. And Shane Haynes says held up. Billy. Well, I can only wonder at what might have been Craig Bellamy. As you can probably tell, less than pleased with that call. Slater will play on, though. One more tackle coming up here for Melbourne. Cameron Smith from dummy half will give it to Cronk. They'd love a repeat set. Inglis trying to get the ball away. It came off a Manly defender to Matt Orford who dives on it. And Manly have hung on. They protect this 12-point lead. Green Hall is out there off the bench. So is George Rose for Des Hasler. Monaghan giving it to Wolf and Manly spread it inside their own 10-metre line. And they took a chance there. It was an opportunity, though, had Stewart got the ball away to Jamie Lyon and others on his outside. They might have gone a long way down the field. Here is George Rose. Again, the locals hooting for a penalty for Melbourne being offside, they feel. Rose playing it. There's the bell for Steve Bell as he gets to dummy half. It's a trend that's been picked up here at Brookvale, obviously. Lyon now will kick it from inside the 40. Down the middle of the field, Slater gets it on the full, and I'm sure the kick chase is one area of Manly's defensive game they've been working on hard this week, knowing they're playing Billy Slater this week. I'm sure both sides would have worked hard on their kick chase games. Brett Stewart for Manly, exceptional runner of the football. You cannot allow him any time and space. 
You need to be present a good line. There's Weaver. Slow to get back to his feet there. The tackle of Hall and others. Donnelly now running at Bryant. Fourth player here, about 37 out. From the manly line, here's Cameron Smith. Going to Cooper, Cronk, Quinn. Shot there and a good tackle. Playing as a back rower tonight. It was Monaghan who made that tackle. Now Cronk will give a chance for Matt King. On the decoy was Steve Bell, who did very well for Chris Hicks. But as it turns out, Hicks can't bring it back out from the in-goal area. And Melbourne force a repeat set. Good bomb again by Cronk. Well, it's good work by Melbourne. They haven't lost their way. They haven't had too many set starts from inside the attacking zone. But the last two opportunities, they've really made Melbourne pay. Uh, made the, the Manly team pay. A drop out and then to work it from the sideline right on their in-goal line. It's all about building pressure. If you build enough pressure, points will come. Ian Donnelly brings it back on the goal line dropout. Stopped there by Jamie Lyon and also Glenn Stewart. Here's Guyer from Dummy Half going to Hoffman. Now King running at Glenn Hall. And also Steve Bell still going. There's the rangy Matt King. The player 15 away from the line. Turner to Hoffman. A good ball for Sam Tagatizzi. He has some leg drive, this youngster. He gets up and plays it quickly also. Smith to Cronk. Ball back on the inside for Lehman. Nothing doing against the grain of this manly defensive line. Now Smith again. Second man ball for Cronk again. Slater. Quick hands to wing this. They recover manly in defence. There's a good tackle made by Monaghan. He's got a couple of classics on that side of the field. Now Cronk rubbering once more. Pressure here on Watmo, who bobbled it. And Billy Slater breathing down his neck. He was able to clean it up, though, and again, they'll get a repeat set of six. Well, again, it's all about building pressure. Lovely kick there by Cooper Cronk. Billy Slater was the man they were looking to get involved. It's also good work by Edge defenders. Edge defenders, they've got to be aware that opposition halfbacks or five-eights, when they're running one way, can get it to go back the other. The old little banana kicks. The reverse kicks. They're very good at doing it. Here is Lima taking it to the line and firing it out the back. It came to Anthony Quinn. Play on is the call from the referee. The reaction from the man with defender suggesting perhaps they thought there was a knock on there from Lima. The referee didn't agree. Donnelly now. Bring it back towards the 20 metre line of Manly. Protecting this 12 point lead. Smith going to Ryan Hoffman. Living up on this left hand side. Lion over the top. Trying to force him onto his back, and he does so. Smith goes to Cronk. Flat ball there for Quinn. Now Geyer joining in from Inglis. Quick hands for Folau. He's under pressure. He cleans up, but he's back on his 20 of Manly when he does so. Inglis now from Dummy Hart. Hasn't been able to take a big hand so far in this game. Not to say the try when Michael Robertson was down the sideline some time ago now. Now Smith to Cronk. Another chip looking for Slater. He's there. Stewart comes down with it. It'll be a penalty against Billy Slater for being in front of the kicker. That's a game call given how well Slater times those runs. Well, I'd like to see that again. You mentioned it was. They, they do time their runs to perfection. He's on side. But isn't it funny when you're playing away from home, when one team has the luck, more so than not, it's always the home team. Just the way things favour you. Just can't take a trick at the moment, Will. It's an enormous call because instead of working the ball away from their own line, here are Manly on play one now, almost at their own 40. It's 5-1, the penalty kick. Here's Hall. The player back towards the halfway line. Looking for the penalty himself so as he flopped back to the ground. George Rose off the left foot. Running at Quinn and White, who's back out there now for Craig Bellamy. Five and a half minutes out from the break. Here comes Watmo. Jumping through players. He beat two before he was stopped by Lima and also Smith. What a couple of weeks he's having here at Brookvale. Orford giving it to Lyon, kicking in behind them. Off the legs there of Cooper Cronk. No restart on the tackle count. This will be the last. Hicks. 
goes to Warford. A spiral kick. Billy Slater again. It almost hit the crossbar. It came from Geyer back to Slater. That was a terrible one to have to try and take. That is the worst kick of the lot. We spoke about Billy Slater taking one before, but that one had more revolutions on it. And it was swirling. He probably needed to play at it, but in the end, they got away with it. Matt Guy was coming back in support. He missed the crossbar by a coat of paint. Understand Slater pulling away from it at the end as it spiraled back towards the field of play. You could see where it bounced, and luckily it went straight to Matt Guy. Here's Inglis imposing himself suddenly against this manly defensive line, beating one before being rounded up from. We'll chip it towards the in goal area. He wants a kind bounce. Robertson will wait and wait and wait. The loud came, but too late. It just beat him over the dead ball line. And how cool was that man, Michael Robertson? Come on, well, Michael Robinson with Israel Folau charging down on top, top of him. He didn't worry about it. He knew that he had time on his side. He knew that the ball was rolling and rolling and rolling. Fortunately, him, it did go dead in goal. Another good carry. His leg speed and drive at the line worries the opposition defences when they become tied. He's got that surge. He runs to holes. He's in good form. Here's Mark Bryant running towards Hoffman and also Brett White back into Melbourne Territory. They want to roll on here. Monaghan was quick out of dummy half. Brent Kite off the top of his hand has put a kick in behind them. He had visions of being Cliffy Lyon suddenly, I think. Well, they didn't need that. That's not part of Kite's job description. He used to carry the ball forward. It needed to be in the hands of Monaghan, Lyon, Orford, later in the tackle count. If it comes to you unexpected, just put your head down and go forward. Or maybe look to offload. Don't worry about kicking it. Here's White. Looking towards Taggart Teasy. Tapping out of one tackle there of Glenn Hall before he was wrapped up eventually with some force by Mark Bryant. Here's Cameron Smith going to Inglis, giving it to King. A chance. One on one against Bell. Good tackle eventually by Bell. And King does well to stay in the field of play. Here's Turner. Coming back from Smith to Gronk. We'll put it high in the air, a chance for Israel for now. Up he goes, look at him go to the line, and he puts it down as well. You can't stop him in that situation. He is dynamic. He makes it 12 tries now in 11 games in the NRL, and up against Robertson with a run-up. It was a mismatch. Well, it was all about an even flow of possession. They were going set for set. And Melbourne had some chances to start in good ball. And Cooper Cronk starting to evolve as a genuine top-line halfback in this competition. Another accurate kick. And look how easy this kid does it. He goes up high. He pulls it down. He's got two merely defenders over him. Places it in his big right hand and just plants it down. That is a good comeback by Melbourne. They were under all sorts of pressure. Haven't they got a good one in <laughs> this kid? Oh. 18 years of age. Look at those numbers. 12 tries in this, his 11th game. And let me tell you, until you stand next to him, you can't get an appreciation of how big he is. He's a monster for a teenager. Well, you just imagine you know, how big he is he going to be when he starts to develop properly, when he's into his 20s. He'll be a good second rower, won't he? I don't think he'll be on the wing for too many seasons. He'll be in the forward pack causing some damage. You never know. He might be a Gene Miles Malmeninga. <laughs> Good luck. Here's Smith. Looking to make it just a converted try the difference here. Seconds out from half time. He's been striking them very well this season as well. This one as straight as you would like. What a kick by and Smith. Manly have dominated Melbourne for the most part in six. this first half, but they lead by just six. That will do us 
for the first half you'd imagine and the height leaping ability and strength of that man Israel Folau have got Melbourne very much into this game as they go to the sheds and Manly will be concerned that they have won this all over the park but lead by just six they'll be worried at the break and speaking of breaks we better take one ourselves and come back to look at the highlights from the first half of the showdown on Super Saturday. One versus two, Manly lead Melbourne 12 points to six. We will take that break and come back in a moment with all the highlights. Make sure you're staying with us. This is live on Super Saturday. There are a couple of times in the first half here tonight against the kicking game of Matt Orford and others for Manly, but Melbourne responding themselves towards the back end of the first half. We know what Cooper Cronk did for Israel for Lauda score their first try of the game. And I'm sure it won't be the last of the battle we saw in that first half between Michael Robertson and Israel for Lauda. It appeared to be a mismatch, of course, height-wise, but we know what happened with Robertson when he scored, well, help Anthony Watmo score that try to make it 10 points to nil for the Sea Eagles. Israel Folau though hit back to make it one all if you like in that first 40 minutes. 12-6 at half time and we'll see if the Sea Eagles can hang on here or Melbourne in fact for the first time this year can come from behind at half time to take the two points and take the outright premiership lead. Ryan Hoffman 19 tackles, 9 hit-ups and 64 metres in that first half and was put through a lovely gap by Cooper Cronk early in the game in what was Melbourne's first chance against the run of play. He looks very effective down that left edge for Melbourne, Ryan Hoffman. Just like to see Melbourne get a few more starts inside Manly's attacking zone. Slater and Greg Inglis, they switched around towards the end of that first half and Inglis started to inject himself into play a lot more. I think mean, that's something that Melbourne will continue to, to do. I think we might see a fair bit more of Matt Dyer in the middle of the field playing as a 5-8 if you like and Inglis getting a bit wider perhaps in this second half and showing what he did of course on Wednesday night for Queensland against New South Wales there is Glenn Stewart's numbers 21 tackles and eight hit ups once again terrific performance from him Anthony Watmo his second row partner he was just fantastic once again our man of the match from Monday night football here when they beat the Broncos just five days ago Manly in front of the Southern Stand in this second half. There are Watmo's numbers, nine tackles, ten hit-ups, 93 metres also. He was a handful every time he got it. Cameron Smith gets us underway for the second half. Orford takes the kick-off and floats a pass back to the middle of the field where Hall brings it forward towards the Manly 20. And they protect this six-point lead. King coming towards Cameron Smith. And also Billy Slater, who's up there, defending in the front line with Greg Inglis, starting at fullback to begin this second half. So Craig Bellamy has so many options between his one, six, seven, and nine, if you like, in the team that he can rotate them pretty much at will. But at the moment, is Slater once again up in the front defensive line. Monaghan just inside the 40. Floating back there was Steve Turner thinking there was a 40-20 chance on. He realised that. Brings it back out towards their own 30-metre line where he's stopped by Stewart and also Brent Kite. Well, that's what something that Craig Bellamy is looking for for all his players is to become flexible. So not just rely on one or two players within the combination. And they've been very effective in playing structured football. And you've got to take into account that Anthony Quinn, he started in the back row today. They've shifted... By the look of things, Billy Slater out to left centre. And Greg Inglis sniffing around the play of the ball. That's why I like Inglis either as a centre or as fullback. Now Slater in the middle of the field where he's so dangerous. And amongst the forwards, grabbed there by Jason King and giving a real working up for as well to Billy Slater was King. Now Prong going to Matt King. Bell up this time was able to get to him after King got past him briefly in the... Last few plays of the first half, Smith floating in behind the line, happily just in between them. 
getting a good look at things before getting the kick in. Not a bad one either for the corner. It was Robertson who brings it back out to now from his own line. It was smart then by Melbourne also after Cameron Smith had kicked the football. They didn't have one or two charged down and try and solve the problem, make a tackle on Robinson. They actually held their position and moved down as a line. Square up, guys. And here is Robertson being slammed to the turf there. Probably by Falau and also Cronk and then coming up, Anthony Quinn. A good tackle with the help of Sam Tagger. Teasy Matok took it forward. A great force. Now what, mate? It's a little skip on as he comes into the defence there of Guy up. So with Lima and White helping him out. 15 shot off the halfway line as they go to the right hand side. Glenn Stewart, good tackle by Matt King. They are hitting and sticking to begin the first half. Melbourne, Orford to Monaghan from just outside his own 30. That was a very strong right boot for Lau. Let's it bounce, picks it up at his own 10. And watch the youngster wind up here. We haven't seen him in too much open space in his career so far. You can only imagine he can motor. Glenn Hall there, making that tackle on him, felt the effects of it. And now Lindworth brings it back towards the 40. One thing he does have a tendency to do when you're kicking out of trouble to him is let the ball bounce. He needs to actually be a bit more urgent and get to the football, and there's a dangerous tackle. Anthony, Anthony Watt, though, though, underneath with Jason King over the top. Both, both. Under the ground. Two years have placed him in a dangerous position. Place it on report, boys. A tackle on report there. Steve Turner was the player trying to squeeze through a gap. He's unlucky there as Jason King grabbed the upper half. Watmo went to finish off the tackle and spun his legs over the top of him. We'll wait and see what the match review committee make of that. For the moment, no problems for Manly. Apart from the penalty off the back of it. And Slater attached that the 20. Gives it to Jeff Lehman. Melbourne looking to level the scores here early in the second half. Slater at dummy half now. Going to Cronk. Here's Smith playing as a second 5 8 if you like. Giving it to Hoffman. He's five metres away. Inglis goes to Cronk. Too much happening for him on his outside, so he tucks the head down and tries to beat them, but he's stopped there by King and others. Slater again at dummy half. Here's Smith. Oh, chucking it there was Anthony Quinn. Hands it off to Matt Dyer. He saw a gap. It closed, but only just coming across to make the tackle was Anthony Watmo, the player who gave away the penalty. He almost gave away another one there. Here's Smith. Good ball to Cronk. They had some numbers on that left-hand side, but Cronk came away from them, still going the halfback. He's only a couple of metres out. Slater waits a dummy half. He gives it to Inglis. Good ball for King. What a tackle by Jamie Lyon. On the last, the ball was forced. Six more tackles. Inglis has it for Melbourne. A mistake by Manly after they did well. Jamie Lyon made a very good tackle. Here's Melbourne coming at them again. Cronk has nothing doing. He holds it up. Gives it to Slater. He runs away from Orford. Dyer again. Getting away from Matzoff. Giving it to Quinn. He's only 10 metres out. What an action-packed start to the second half. Here's Cronk now. Going to go. Matai with the right shoulder. Stopped him in a hurry. Cronk down the short side. Goes to Lima. He's a couple of metres out. Still two plays in this set for Melbourne. For Lau, a long ball. It went to Cronk. He cuts out one to give it to Smith. They keep asking questions. Manly keep making tackles. And Smith will play it here. On the last, just outside the 10. Here's Hoffman, grovering off the legs of one. It comes to Brett Stewart, and Manly have hung on. Oh, they've had to hang on for two sets in a row, Manly. They did some terrific work. They scrambled. And the Melbourne Storm are asking plenty of questions, but they just continue to turn up. What an effort to hold them out. Back to back sets. Here's Glenn Stewart. Losing the ball here. It might have been helped out. Play on is the call. Gaia put it down. Now the referee's call was no advantage that I hear. In here, boys. Yep. The ball was going to go 
to Melbourne, is it? Here's the ball back on the inside. Gaia put it down. No, it's not going to Melbourne. Means it. Oh, can't go to Melbourne, sorry. The pass it's... meant there's certainly an advantage taken. Yeah, to me, it's it well, had to be. Yeah. It had to be. But I'm sure the referee said no advantage. He might have just confused himself. He might have perhaps thought there was no advantage to Manly after they picked up the ball. Nothing doing yeah. for them. They set the scrum for them. But it was a moment where you thought, wow, we might have a tough call here against the home side. The referee got it right. Here's Kites bringing it back towards Brett White and also Tag It's Easy. They've survived an early scare here. Monaghan to what, mate? Coming to Cameron Smith. That's a fast pace, isn't it? Well, it's a lot more intensity about the Melbourne Storm. Looks as though they've addressed their defence. They wanted to make sure that they really set a standard with their defence. And Jamie Lyon, if they get on the outside of their defence, they're really moving quickly. Here they come, putting pressure on Matty Orford. Oh, Slater was keen to get to him. So was Sam Taggart's in the end. Tagatizi might have cleaned up Billy Slater. Here's Inglis picking up the ball at fullback. Chopped down by Jamie Lyon, getting to his feet to go again. Now the referee calls hell. Here's Falau working it away from dummy half. And Billy Slater is concussed in a bad way on the ground. He collapsed back to the turf. He is split open. And there are major problems here for Billy Slater in the Melbourne Storm. Oh, He's in a bad way, the Billy the Kid. Do you put the ball there? Just place it there. Hey, take the line he was hit okay, in the attempted charge down by his own player, Sam Tagatizi. They were trying to get to Warford, and Tagatizi, as it turned out, got to Slater. It might have been the right knee, perhaps, Definitely. of Tagatizi that got Billy Slater. Definitely the knee. What a nasty hit. It split him open. Now, he was trying to get back to his feet, Billy Slater, and he couldn't. He kept on falling down. Oh, he's he in a bad see. way. He is in a bad way. You can see the swelling in that right eye straight away. It was an awkward attempt at charge down by Tagger Teasy, wasn't it? Matty Orford, former teammate, just a moment ago, coming over to check the condition of Billy Slater. Well, I would have to say that's the end of Slater tonight with more than half an hour remaining, and that does Melbourne's cause no good, quite obviously. No, but we just spoke about them being a flexible team and an adaptable football team. They have got players that can move and shuffle in different positions. Young Orbison's just taking his place on the field. He's a good player. He was great last week. And here's Cameron Smith. Straight through them, gets away from Glenn Stewart, got a ball away. King, King versus Bell, an origin-worthy contest. King going down the field, stays inside the sideline by centimetres. They need to go right. They need to send the ball right. Man, we were all there, bunch on the right-hand side of the field. Here is Gronk kicking. Robertson had recovered, so had Stewart. Stewart will be rounded up by Inglis in the in-goal area. Gronk knew there were gaps. You saw how many players were there. Trying to get to Matt King. There were six or seven Sea Eagles there. Ah, good work there by Cameron Smith. And then it was New South Wales origin player on Queensland origin player. And then Manly, the troops arrived. And Melbourne knew they had the numbers, but they decided to put the kick through. And Greg Inglis gets one back on Brett Stewart. In the first half, it was Inglis getting dragged back into the end goal by Stewart. And he remembered that one. Some good contact by Watmo on Cross. And Cross bringing it back and getting smashed. But he gets back to his feet. Here's Tagger Teasy. Running at Kites. He'll play it just outside the 20. Smith on the run around from Bronk. Good ball to King. Good tackle though equally by Lyon and also Bell. Just outside the 10 with a big long right hand side to work it. They go back towards the play the ball. Here's White looking for a fast play the ball. Protecting the ball in the tackle there of Lyon. Orbison to Cronk. Now tag it easy. Lead runner ball. He'll take some stopping. They do eventually. Now, Pickland to his back after the call was held. Watmo could have been penalised there. Orbison goes to Cronk. 
steps away from one, gives it to Brett White. He spins to Inglis. He chips it high in the air. What a great kick. Turner comes back to King. Still the last play. Inglis will sum things up and give Folau another chance. Here he comes. Dyer got to it. He tipped it backwards straight to Steve Mather. Ah, the game. We're starting to warm. Both teams warming to the challenge. Melbourne throwing everything at Manly, but Melbourne, oh, Manly, they just keep holding their line. They keep turning up. They're desperate. They're working hard for one another. They've been challenged, but they've responded, and that's something that we spoke about going into the contest. Here's Stewart coughing it up. Ben Cross has it. And the chance of Manly subsides for the moment on the hill at Brookvale. What atmosphere there is. What a tackle by Steve Matai. Oh, it yeah, looked as though he got him in a dangerous position. He's, He's a been lucky. feisty type, isn't he? It certainly was effective in stopping the front row, no matter how it ended up. Oh, Here's Quinn. He'll play it at the 20. Orbison goes to tag a teasing. Putting the foot down, running at Kites and also King. Plenty of tackles here. Up their sleeve. Orbison. They go to Clock. Lead runner ball for Hoffman. Stopped. But only just, again it was done low, now they crash across, there's a chance they're held up again. Held up, tackle four. The second time in the game. It's great defence, it's just great urgency shown by Manly. They've been knocked around, some of their players cannot get to their feet, but yet they're still finding ways to make the tackles. Play five in this set, Hare Smith going to them. Running into the line where he stops by Williamson. Last tackle now. Ten out. Orbison from dummy half. He goes to Cronk. A chance here for Turner on the run. King is there also. Matt King can leap. He can score tries. He gets an important one here. What a piece of play. And isn't he pumped up as well? Well, it was just sustained pressure. And that's the only way that the Melbourne Storm have been able to score their points here tonight. They've thrown some terrific questions at that Manly defensive line and Manly have aimed up in every department. But a big strength of Melbourne is their big outside men. Their ability to leap and yeah, come down with the football. And their team. kickers put it in the right positions. The coaching box, they clap. A lot of time left in this game. But Manly, when they were defending, Monaghan went down, Lyon went down. They looked as though they weren't going to get back up, but somehow they did. They got themselves into the line. They were very courageous. And that's what you expect when one takes on two. Cameron Smith, a chance to tie it up. 12 all, 27 minutes remaining. What an almost half an hour of football it's going to be here. Smith, his first attempt from the sideline before half-time off the Falau try. A tremendous kick. An easier one this time. About 13 metres in from the eastern touchline. Rufa echoing with boos. No matter how much they do, they can't put off Cameron Smith. It's 12 all. We were hoping for a game like this, and we've got one as well. The contact from all involved has been enormous. What about that tackle there after the event by Matai? A big one there on Guyana. He cleaned up Ben Cross also. That stopped the front rower. We're going to see more of that before full time. Here is Ben Cross. Bringing it back to Williamson and also Watmo. Maddon, energetic in the defensive line. He's right. Charging in Monaghan and also Kites. They play it just outside the Melbourne 20. Orbison. Goes to Anthony Quinn. He takes his turn. Fighting between the centres and the back row tonight. Got a breather there for a while. He's back out there now. Here's Cross. Picked up and dumps heavily. Good tackle, Michael Monaghan. Orbison 
fires it deep to Cameron Smith. He kicks down the middle of the field. Brett Stewart has been very good behind him tonight, cleaning up. Oh, man, the big tackle here, though. Brett White got to him and leveled it. Now Hicks going across the forward. It's what they need more of their outside men coming in and getting involved. The forwards have had to do plenty of work. They've had no football manly. Outside backs, their responsibility to relieve the forwards. Matt's eye playing it. Monaghan goes to Kites. He stopped here in the tackle of Johnson. And also Warburson. Warburson played all 80 minutes last week against the Roosters. Now Warburson. Back on the inside here. For Jason King, who played on the last. Manly, one of scoring chance to speak of so far in this second half. Here's Orford chipping back there for Stewart. The beautifully read from the open side by Crop. Now a counter attack from Inglis to Gaia. He is very good, Cooper Crop, but floating back from the other side of the ruck to get back there and look for those cross kicks, isn't he? Well, you need to be aware of it, but you also need to be aware of it when you're fatigued. Jason! And that's when opposition teams get found out. Now we're getting to the stage in the game with what team wants it the most. What team wants it, but what team needs it? Johnson playing it for Orbison. Flat pass. Some thought was forward there for Ben Cross. He's almost back to the halfway line as he gets back to his feet. Now Cronk. Kicking for the corner, end over end as well. Robertson desperately get back there and get to it very quickly. He'll pick it up at his own goal line. The chase from Melbourne is a good one, and Cronk was down there leading the way with Anthony Quinn. That was smart by Cooper Cronk. Not mucking around with it, getting the ball, getting it down the other end of the field, and getting Manly, who have been under sustained pressure in the second half, to work it off their line once again. That was a good run, though, by Brett Stewart, getting out of dummy half. They need quicker play the balls, Manly. Here's Monaghan, going to Kite, running at Anthony Quinn, flipping out the back, good pass, good hands by Monaghan, long ball, it comes to Roberts, and he got away from Falau, then hit the deck. Oh, he was going to be one-on-one -on -one there with Greg Inglis. He beat Falau pretty easily with a fend. Awful. Going to Jamie Lyon. Here's Bell, stopped there by Steve Turner. 35 away on the last. Put the kick in off the outside of the boot, going back to Matt King, who was fighting back there. He realised there was no way to turn her up at the line, so he got back there and made the catch and gives it off to Greg Inglis, who will finish this game. You'd imagine now at fullback. They did it so well there, Melbourne, when their line was split. They all got back into their lanes. They got back as fast as they possibly could. And as Manly looked to, looked to shift the football, no one come out of the line. They held, they slid. And it gave their outside men an opportunity to sum up the situation. And Turner was able to come in and stop it on Steve Bell. Here's Cameron Smith. In the first receiver, giving it to Johnson. Tucks his head underneath the tackle there of George Rose and also Stewart. Slow back to his feet. And why not after playing on Wednesday night? Cronk, a chip over the top. But Stewart came up. He was shallow to the line. He realised there might have been something happening there for Kronk and made a very good play. He plays it well, Brett Stewart. You watch him as a fullback. Early in the tackle count, he's close to the line. Then he starts to drift back. But if he senses that there is going to be a short kick, he comes up extremely close. He watches what the key position players are doing. And if they're indicating to a fullback as if it's going to be a chip, a chip and chase or a, a chip over the line, he just does it so well. He reads it to perfection. He's dead. Here's George Rose. Monaghan out of dummy half. Kicking. Charged down by Donnelly, said the referee. And Manley gets six more tackles. They needed that. They needed that, Manley. I don't know whether that was a good play, though, from Ian Donnelly. Now Stewart. Back into Melbourne territory. And they find themselves inside Melbourne's 20 here and apply some pressure. It has been... Played at his other end of the field this first 20 minutes of the second half. Watmo flings the ball out the back. Hicks was there looking for a chance to come in and help out. And that's exactly what he does here. Held to the ground. Now he plays it just outside the 30. Orford to Matai. Flips the ball away. A chance for Robertson. Finally came across in cover. Falau recovered to chop him down. Just inside the 10. Monaghan 
goes to Orford. A chip across the field. Straight to the hands, though, of Matt King. That wasn't the play they were looking for in their first real scoring chance of the second half. Nah. In these tight games, you need to come up with better plays and better options late in the tackle count. He knew what he wanted to do, Matt Orford, but it was a poor kick. He put it in the air straight to Matt King. He needed to be along the ground. Here it is, here it is. Along the ground and make the big outside backs from Melbourne go down on the football. They want the ball in the air. Donnelly playing it for Orbison. He goes to Gaia. Back up towards the halfway line. He takes it. Back inside the 40. Smith with a foot just outside if he was looking for a 40 20. Stewart taking it on the floor. We'll bring it back and almost find a way through the tackle there of Turner and also Orbison. Jamie Lyon goes to Chris. Six hits. It's through. Grabbing an ankle tap by Johnson. Monaghan as they go quickly to Orford, running a long way before he gives it to Williamson. Good tackle made there. A desperate one by Ryan Hoffman. Monaghan again to Orford, close hand. Stewart under pressure there from Orbison. Tries to get an arm free, wrapped up by Donnelly and also Cameron Smith. Monaghan again. Goes to Mark Bryant, very flat when he took the ball. It's a simple play on play number five. One more tackle here. What can Orford do this time? He puts it through the hands. Lyon, he got us the end goal. English says there, how cool is he? That's the better kick, though. That's the better kick from Manly along the ground. Into the end goal. And English, he had it covered. But he just knocks it dead. And Manly get a chance to build some pressure. Well, he could buy ice off him. A little parry off the left hand. No dramas here, boys. Everyone calm down up there in the commentary box. I've got it under control. Don't worry about me. Here's Cameron Smith. With the dropout. Played all between the legs there of Robertson. A squirted between his legs and into the touch line. That will be a disaster. He'll play it, though. Conaghan. Going to Big George. Rose, who went past Donnelly. Grabbed, though, by Orbison. And he gets... Oh, no. Oh, George Rose. Well, a terrible injury here. An absolutely terrible injury. He's badly broken his right leg. And we won't show you that in close-up again. That is a, a terrible one. <laughs> Wow, we've seen a couple of major injuries here tonight. Oh, we take a moment here to be concerned for George Rose. Of course, we saw Billy Slater taken from the field to begin the second half. They are treating him for a possible fractured cheekbone inside the Melbourne Storm dressing room. No surprise given the severity, of course, of the contact with Sam Tagatizzi. That's a, that's a bad look for Billy, isn't it? It's a bad haircut, too. <laughs> <laughs> Not for Billy. <laughs> well, Des Hasler and the Manly crew. They can be very concerned for George Rose. He suffered a badly broken leg here. He Did couldn't, look good, couldn't get back to his feet. After making a good run, burst through the tackle of Ian Donnelly, he was grabbed by James Orbison. Steve Maddai went up to see how George Rose was and came out of it looking green. He'll hit the deck here in the tackle of oh Orbison. Oh, boy. The weight of Orbison's body comes down on the leg. Right on the, the fibula. <sighs> you just hate to see that. It was a good run, too, by George Rose. It's terrific. He's been tremendous for Manly this year. Coming off the interchange, or whether it be starting, He's always made an impact in all his performances. But you love these tight games when it starts to get down to the back quarter. Under 20 minutes to go, you learn a lot about your teammate and you learn a lot about yourself as an individual, how you react under pressure. When you're tired and you're fatigued and you need to back up after an origin game and you need to be a leader, you've got to find something. You've got to find something special. You have to make sure that your body 
does not tell your head that you're tired. Well, they're certainly entitled to be out there at the moment, of course. Michael Monaghan won't be tight. He's proved himself to be a match winner, of course, in his time here at the Sea Eagles. And he's headed for Warrington for four seasons of Rugby League in the UK Super League from 2008 onwards. Mark Bryant, a concerned teammate of George Rose, as he would be, and they will load him on the stretcher and remove him. And well, one thing this will do for both teams is give them a big spell. A big spell for a big 18-minute finish. And it comes down to your desire. How much hunger you have. Let's take a look at the tries in the game so far while they attend to George Rose. Michael Monaghan, of course, helping come to the right-hand side for Chris Hicks to get the opener in the fourth minute of the game then not that long afterwards just 10 minutes later they scored through this moment we thought somewhat controversial yeah i thought robertson actually touched the football but the radio referee disagreed and then right on the stroke of half time melbourne uh, were able to bounce back and cooper cronk just getting the football up in the air and falau coming down with it and scored a, a much confidence booster for the melbourne storm and then after half time a similar play Cooper Cronk, ball in the air, and Matt King, another one who's very good under a high ball, scores, and you can just see the elation of their players. You'll hear the round of applause here for George Rose as he comes from the ground, taken straight to the Manly dressing room, and he'll be taken, I imagine, immediately to hospital to have that leg attended to. It's bound to break, as you can see, in a rugby league field. Manly in the meantime, have tackles to play with here in attack. 12 all it is, 18 minutes remaining. And the one-time leaders of this game hit back. They're inside the Melbourne 10. They'll play it here through Bryant. Monaghan goes to line. Stewart, second man play for brother Brett Stewart, bounced away from Turner's tackle. But they handle him pretty well in the end through Cameron Smith and Matt King. Here's Hicks. Coming back to Lyon. He'll put the crossfield bomb in. Robertson up against Falau. Robertson lost the ball. Falau picks it up. Just the force of the tackle by the teenager knocked it from Robertson's grasp. Well, he played it well. He allowed Robertson to take the football and then he come in at the back. He forced it loose. Just looking at the way that Steve Turner defends for Melbourne on that left edge. He's coming in field. He's trying to stop the man before it gets to the winger. If you're man, you'd be probably looking to kick in behind him. Look as though you're going to pass and kick in behind Steve Turner. Now, Donnelly couldn't get to his feet. Donnelly, as you say, Laurie, oh, the right, he's concussed. He was struggling to get back to his feet. Wobbly in the tackle. He goes forward here as Brock gets a kick away from inside his own 40. But such has been the kick pressure from both teams tonight. There really hasn't been a 40-20 chance for either side well for melbourne it's building for them to run it late in the tackle count because the back three for manly are now starting to drift further and further back they're trying to save their forwards some energy by retrieving the football on the full good tackle there by orbison on steve bell driving back towards his own line now Orford gives it to brent kites Getting a couple wide there, chopped down on a nice tackle by Tagatizi though. Monaghan to Orford, short ball off the hip, the one man in between them. He beat Donnelly and that is still going down to the 20. They wrap him up. Smith got there, so did Hoffman. Orford going to the short side, giving it to Steve Bell who puffs it up. Turner came up out of the line to put some pressure on him. Bell couldn't hang on to it. It looked promising. Instead, it's King who works it away for Melbourne. Well, again, Bell getting the football, but Turner was there to meet him. Here's Donnelly. He's OK now. He looks slow in the defensive line, though, as Watmo cut back inside him. To go on that long run here is Turner now. Good run by the winger. Gets them up to the 40. Three plays going to miss it. Dyer out of dummy half. I'm going to take my hat off to the referee too. Hasn't been a penalty yet in the second half. I think he's let the game flow. 
Here's White. He'll play it. Just outside Manly's 40. Last tackle here. Smith it is. We'll put some pressure on Brett Stewart. Melbourne's chases are tied. It's Cameron Smith who comes through and gets to Stewart first. It was a bad chase, although King makes it a good one with a tackle there, but Melbourne looked tired coming down the field. Well, how good is it with the fullbacks that we have in the competition? Because you know one bad chase could cost you. One bad chase can lead the points. When you've got the players of Stewart and Inglis on show tonight. Here's Pike running it. Guy up. Put an offload there, a chance to wind up. He brings it back out towards Manly's 30. 14 minutes remaining in this game. We've got an age to go. Anything could happen. And it will. And it will. More than likely. Here's Orford. Turning the ball back on the inside for Glenn Stewart. He's almost back to the halfway line. Monaghan. Last play. We'll give it to Orford. Kicking away from English towards the corner. Got some backspin on the kick as well. English picks it up. Got away from the tackle there of Maddai. Took a chance in picking it up so close to the sideline. And he did well, the fullback. And now for Lau. I thought he actually lost control of the football there for a moment, Greg Inglis. He was very calm to get to it. That uh, guy comes up with a run. You mentioned Melbourne looked tired. Merely finishing strong. James Orbison out of dummy half. Travis Burns is out there now for Manly. He's had to wait a long time to get a chance here. Cameron Smith from inside the 40. Down the middle of the field, though. Stewart will pick it up on his own in goal, though. Good kick by Smith. Here he is again, leading him down the field on the kick chase as well. And they'll wrap up the fullback. 10 out from his own line. He'll crack first and make a mistake in their own end to give the other team a chance here. It's a battle worthy of first versus second, isn't it? Matter goes to Monaghan. There's Robertson. The foot down, grabbing a good tackle by Johnson. No surprise there. Now what, no? For a chance to beat Tag it's easy. White came in over the top. Monaghan from inside the 40. Looking for a rare 40-20 chance. Inglis got to it on the foot and brings it back to Melbourne's 40. Oh, I love it. I love it when he gets like this. Here's King. Going to turn up. You just think that one of the, the players with a bit of speed and footwork will change this. They look vulnerable both sides through the middle, but not with one out carries like that. Anyone with speed and a bit of footwork. Here's Johnson going to cross. He certainly is the man that can win you a game. What a season he's had. What a game he had two weeks ago on Monday Night Football to almost single-handedly slay the Bulldogs. White stopping on his run, coming to Burns and also Monaghan. Last tackle here for Melbourne. Orbison going to Cameron Smith, putting it high in the air. Stewart floating back, is back in the end goal, makes a nice catch as well. And he'll bring it back out to Manly's 20. As we approach the final 10 minutes, I guess we're starting to think about field goals and Cameron Smith, obviously an exponent for the Melbourne Storm, likewise Cooper Cronk, but Manly have so many as well who can drop one. Well, suppose in a tight situation and a game where there hasn't been too many points, you are starting to come to the stage in the game where one point may be enough. But I think this is a try in the offering here. Here's Watmo trying to create a good tackle, though, by Tagatizzi. He's a Johnson clone, isn't he? Here's Monaghan down the short side. Maddai forced the pass. It was knocked on. A little mistake there from the Kiwi. They had a chance on this left-hand side. He was looking for Robertson. Monaghan taking it to the line. The pass there for Lau again coming in at the right time to put the pressure on. And he's made the correct call once again. Out of the hands forward. I actually thought when he passed it, it came off the Melbourne Storm play. And when he regathered, I thought, well, that could be Manly's ball. Okay, guys, in. Let's join in now. The referee is always that... prone to going with the defending side in that situation there. The Seagulls, 11 of 16 sets. You saw all the stats in the second half from Melbourne also. Inside the final 10. What a showdown. 
to Inglis. Going past Kite. Is it Inglis who can beat the line and run the length of the field perhaps to put on something? We know he's more than capable. Here he is getting back to his feet. Playing it for Turner. Goes to King. Working it up towards the halfway line. Orbison. To Ryan Hoffman. He'll be thinking, well, I'm a chance for Origin 2 for New South Wales. He might be able to do something here to prove to the selectors he's ready. Here's Liam with a ball from Johnson. It looked OK. The Manly fans didn't think so. No surprise there, though. And they'll play it just outside the 40. Orbison goes to Inglis. Not much happening for him. He paid the price here. Travis Burns got up and drives him backwards in the tackle. Nothing run from Inglis. Wrong from 45 metres. Monaghan got there with a charge down. Might have been interfered with by Cooper Cronk. Inglis came up with it. Well, it was lucky. I think both players were fighting for the football. And then at the last moment, Cronk pulled away. I think they were shoulder to shoulder. Here's for out. Inside the 40. If they took one from 45 metres out, they'll take another one here. Oh, Brent White put it down. He didn't think he was going to get it. He thought he was the decoy. Well, you need to think. That's why you're an option runner. You're not a decoy runner. You're an option runner. At any stage, you can receive the football. That's just a mental lapse. Bryant taking it back towards the halfway line. They're screaming for a penalty here. Here's Kite going to Lyon. Glenn Stewart spinning in the tackle there of King and also Smith. Eight minutes remaining at Brookvale. What a start to Super Saturday. Here's Bell. Stopped there by Orbison and also Cameron Smith. Just the one try so far in the second Matt, half. Now he's trying to change that here. Off the hands of Brett Stewart. Falau has a play. Not backwards, says the call. And it's last here for Manly, Orford. Will kick back towards the touchline. Gronk is back there. He'll pick it up in his own in goal and gives it to Inglis. He runs out, beats a tackle. Here he goes, going to Monaghan, who chops him down. He still had work to do had he beaten Monaghan. What a run, though, by Inglis. Now Dyer is away. Grabbed by a bootlace by Watmo. Johnson, Melbourne. Coming to get them, take it into Manly territory. Three plays gone. Will they look field goal here? Cronk goes to Cameron Smith. To Turner, playing inside Matt King for the moment. Just outside the 40. Two tackles left. Hoffman will cart it forward for a settler. He'll play it 30 metres out. Smith is behind them. So is Cronk. Here he is. It goes back to Cameron Smith. He lines it up, he doesn't have the distance. Taken on the fall in the in goal by Brett Stewart. Well, I don't know whether that was the great play. I don't think that was the right play by Melbourne. Because Manly looked to be out on their feet. I would have looked to go a long kick and go field position once again and get Manly coming off their line. Knowing that they had to work it. 90 metres, 100 metres down the end of the into the field. This is just too easy for Manly. Here's Robertson, getting in a dummy half. Good tackle by Johnson with Quinn over the top. Monaghan going to Kites. He runs towards Taggartees. He gets an offload away. Good ball. Monaghan to Warford. On the left-hand side, they attack them. Here's Matai spinning it to Stewart. Monstered from behind by Israel Falau. He plays it quickly. Play number five. Here's Misses to the right. There wasn't much in it. And they rose as one behind the goalposts at the northern end. They thought it was on its way. It just missed. A coat of paint in it. Well, five minutes is still a long time in a game of football. It is still a long time. You will still receive five sets, six sets in this game. Three each. Here's Cronk. Oh, oh, pass to Gaia. Here's a chance. Man, they get a chance. Cronk apologises. He knows what's coming. A 
They had to try and shut them out here. Well, it's amazing. No side is racing to form a scrum and get time out. The clock is still ticking. I'm wondering what the reason is, because one of these teams will need some time. They elect to take a breather. 18,640 here to watch this on Super Saturday. What a super game. Oh, Inglis high there in the tackle on Jamie Lyon. No call. Bell from Dunny Hunt. Will they go to Orford? Will they go to Monaghan? Will they go for the fake and look for a try? Here's Pikes. He knows only one way. Johnson and Tagatizi stopping at the 30 metre line. They've used three plays. Here's Orford giving it back on the inside for Jason King. They picked up a couple of metres, maybe. Here's Monaghan going back to Brett Stewart. They look disorganised. One more play here. Orford has to get back and to get ready. He kicks it from just outside the 30. This one is right down the pipe. Matt Orford, the former Storm player, has kicked the field goal to give Manly the lead. Three minutes left. It's 13 to 12. Well, he struck it nicely. He had players coming out of the line at him and hit it beautifully. He had a head clash there with Orbison. Orbison did his best to try and put him off. But under pressure, has Matt Orford delivered and grabbed Manly the points. Cameron Smith will go deep with the restart. No short one from Melbourne with... Three minutes now exactly remaining. They force an error. Can they force an error here, Manly? Up, oh, Melbourne. They need to be able to force an error. King, counting it forward. Three long minutes for these Manly fans at Brookvale. Here's Monaghan going to Kite. Running towards it, stopped by Johnson. He was looking for a hit around the contact area to make him lose it. Kite pinching a couple of metres. Stewart had a dummy half. Almost got away from them. White stopped him and only just. Monaghan gives it to Watmo. Brett Lawrence might have been offside. He was in no man's land. Play on, they say. Here's Watmo. Inside the 40. They've done very well in this set, Manly. Watmo will play it slowly. Orford will come to the sideline looking for it. Inglis is there. He lets it find touch. He lets it find touch, and Melbourne will be down to their last set of six with less than two minutes remaining. Well, what have they got? What have they got, Melbourne? It comes no. down. Make sure you get the hands on before you put the leg up. Two, one down. set. Right. It comes down to one set. And they have to travel 90 metres down the field to win it. Merely Chant goes up. Desi Hasler not giving anything away. To Melbourne look for a kick from the scrum win. Brett Stewart is defending one end from the right hand wing. Do they go to Stewart, make him make the tackle, and then put a kick in, in sec on second play? No, because Robinson's covered. Here's Valau. He'll play. Prop. Goes to Hoffman. He runs at Travis Burns. Just over 90 seconds remaining as Smith gives it off to Anthony Quinn. He's stopped there by King and also Kite. Manly can't afford to give away a penalty. They need to be careful. They lead by a point. Orbison gives it to Cross. They take it through the forwards. Up to the 40 metre line. Cross tried to force it but only just hung on to it. Here's Orbison. He goes to Smith. To the line. Nothing doing for him. Burns makes the tackle. Last play for Melbourne. Is this their last chance? Inglis to Crump. He goes wide. Here's Johnson. He's got Guy on his outside. What was there? They come in to shut him down. That could be the game. Matai and Watmo make the tackle. It could ensure Manly get the win. They don't want to play it. They're using up precious seconds. The clock stops. 39 seconds remaining. 
Matai out of dummy half. Almost gets away from them. Loses the ball. Falau has it for Melbourne. We're not done with yet. And why would we be? It's one versus two after all. Here's Cross. Oh, right. Put Matty off on the base of his apex or something. What a hit that was. Here's Orbison. He goes to Smith. He chips it long along the ground. Going back. They'll put it up through Chris Hicks. He kicks it to the ring the ball. And that will be it. Outstanding game of football. Congratulations to both teams. Simply outstanding. They had players backing up after Wednesday night. Merely had a short preparation coming into this contest. But they gave it their all. There was courage shown by both teams. There was players at one stage who couldn't get up off the ground. But they managed to. And both these sides will be there at the end of the season. It was a classic. It had everything. What a play by Orford to win the game. Who was going to blink first? Was it Melbourne? They took some long-range attempts. Monaghan missed, but only just. And it was Orford. They had the chance from close range. He didn't waste it. A terrific kick under pressure there from James Orbison. They knew straight away it was good. They were waiting. They celebrated. Then they had to wait a further three minutes as Manly hung on. Melbourne had a couple of late chances, but they were too good tonight, the Seagulls. An early start, and they ran out to a 12 points to nil lead after 20 minutes. Built the foundation tonight for the winners. We go downstairs to Matt Orford. What a kick, Matt. It was a terrific kick from the moment it left the boot where you're always confident. Oh, mate. mate there were probably about two or three blokes uh, charging you down, so... You know, I just gave it all I got, and you know, luckily for us, it went over. And it was a great team effort defensively in the second half, Matty. You looked as though your line was going to crack, but people just kept turning up. They were getting off the ground. They were wounded, but they just kept working hard for one another. Yeah, mate, uh, you're exactly right. Um, the new Melbourne, you know, they, they weren't, they were always going to keep coming. So credit to the boys, you know, they just kept turning up, and, uh, you know, a couple of last two chaps there really kept them out, and, you know, we took them from there. Is this extra special for you tonight, Matt, given, of course, you played with so many seasons for Melbourne to beat them here at Brookvale? Mate, it's always good to play against the old boys, but um, it's always a test. You know, uh, hey, they're a great team, and um, you know, the crowd turned out tonight and really helped us. And what about at half-time? You were leading 12-6 just before the break, and then they scored a try. What was the feeling? Were you deflated going in at half-time? No, not really, mate. I, I think we, we knew it was going to be a really good contest, and we knew... Um, you know, we just tried to hold them out till half time and you know come back out. But as Melbourne do, they've always got sub superstars which they'll pull something out of the bag and you know they're never gonna go away. So that's the team they are and you know credit to them, they really pushed us. Yeah, it's a win to save Matty. Enjoy it tonight. Thanks for your time. Thanks guys. Matty Orford joining us live on Fox Sports supplied the winning field goal to beat Melbourne, his former team. 13 points to 12. What an effort it was, of course, but there were so many good players for Manly here tonight, and one of them once again is our man of the match. The Bundaberg run man of the match on Monday night football just five nights ago here at Brookfile. It was Anthony Watmo who got the honours on that occasion against the Brisbane Broncos. And he joined us once again live here at Brookfile. We're making a habit of this, Anthony. What a win by your side. You must be delighted. Yeah. Mate, they're the ones you, you really cherish, and especially after a short turnaround on Monday night. You know, the boys done it tough. And to come out here and, and put, it, put a performance together like we did, a great team performance. You know, it's a credit to the boys and you know, credit to our coaching staff for, for getting us ready for this one. Yeah, talking about a, a good performance, coming off a short preparation, you, you had a ready-made excuse if you didn't win tonight, but it looked as though you were determined, and especially yourself, uh, Anthony, to come out and really lead from the front. Yeah, uh, you know, we... We didn't come into this game with any excuses. We knew we were professionals, and the short turnaround, we knew we could come back, you know, bigger and better after the, uh, you know, only after a couple of days off. And, you know, it's a credit to the boys. You know, we really dug in there, and, and you know, it was a great, great outcome. So coming into the contest, did you do a lot of training sessions, or was it basically just to get yourself fresh mentally for the contest and physically? Yeah, it was. You know, there, there wasn't any fitness sessions during the week, which was, you know, great for the body. There was a couple of massages and, and a couple of swims, so. 
you know, coach and staff really looked after us this week and, you know, as a credit to the boys for coming out here and playing for the full 80 minutes. Great effort. Anthony, the Seagulls are on fire at home here at Brookvale. Three straight wins in three weeks. Congratulations tonight. Thanks, boys. Anthony Watmore, a star again here for the Manly Seagulls tonight in front of almost 19,000 fans. They loved what they saw. They got going very quickly. Helped by the likes of Anthony Watmore, who scored this try, a crucial try as it turned out. Michael Robertson in the contest there with Israel Falau. What now came down with it, and what Mo came down with it, in fact, and he was great all over the park tonight. He's just got tremendous leg speed, and as the game wore on, he looked as though he became the most dangerous player on the field. I spoke about players with speed, but I forgot about Anthony Watmo. Don't worry about your outside men. Look to Watmo with his strength, his leg drive, and his speed when opposition forwards become tied. Not only does he scout down a left edge, but he's prepared to roll up his sleeves and get in the middle and carry the ball over the advantage line. We've covered Manly now the last two weeks, and he's been their best player. That he has been, and he might have put himself back in origin calculations at the same time. What a game here to kick off Super Saturday, but don't forget there's more to come. Lap it up at home because the Titans will take on the Rabbitohs, a crucial game for both those sides, live from Gold Coast Stadium next. You also have the choice of watching the Sharks and the Roosters. Ricky Stewart versus Chris Anderson, the two coaches of their former clubs going head-to-head that one should be a cracker also. Can the Sharks continue their winning ways? Thanks for joining us here tonight. We hope you've enjoyed it, but make sure you stay with us live on Fox Sports. More Super Saturday action.